Recognized today the world over as a premier solo artist and record producer, still manages his commitment as lead singer of British supergroup Genesis. And not unlike most successful artists, getting into the music business back in the early days was not so glamorous. Growing up in England, what was it like? What did your dad do? My dad was an insurance, uh, insurance broker. Well, actually, he wasn't a broker. He actually just worked at an insurance office in the city for 40 years. Uh, and on the contrary to that, my mum was uh, she owned a toy shop for a while, and then she became a theatrical agent oh. for children. Is that where your whole? Uh... Uh, I think so. Oh, well, I was doing stuff, amateur stuff, uh, because my dad used to have like a little cabin cruise, a boat. You know, he used to love the, the river, and. Uh, so we belonged to a yacht club, not a high, high, high yacht club, but a sort of a very low-key cabin cruiser yacht club. And we used to go there every Thursday, and they used to have like regattas and stuff, where everyone used to get together with their boats. And uh, they used to put on amateur shows, and I was in those. So this sort of, because I was a, a, like a child actor before I was a drummer, so I kind of got the show business thing from there, I suppose. So right from the beginning, there was no question at all about the fact you wanted to be a musician. No, I never. I, there's never any question about me being a musician, really. I mean, I always wanted to be the drummer. Mm -hmm. But you can't really be in a professional group when you're 13, 14, 15, you know. So um, I had to do something while I was waiting to grow up, you know. So uh, when I was about 17, I'd been in semi-professional groups. I mean, from the age of about 14, 15 onwards, but I, I couldn't obviously do it for a living, and I still had to go to school. So uh, about 16, 17, I left school and uh, started going fully professional. In 1970, Genesis acquires a new drummer, Phil Collins. For the next five years, Phil Collins is very much a part of helping to establish Genesis firmly in the annals of rock. And with Peter Gabriel's departure in 1975, becomes their lead singer. lead singer of Genesis. Phil Collins now steps into the spotlight as an accomplished solo artist and a sensitive producer, reinforcing his multifaceted talents. Keyboard player, drummer, songwriter, producer, entrepreneur. <laughs> Genius, they say about you. Oh, rubbish. Um, no, that's no. the one thing that's said most about you. Phil Collins is a genius. That's too bad. But obviously the word is banned around uh, too easily then. Um, no, I mean, I, I'm... I'm, I'm still learning. Of course, if you'd have seen me yesterday, you would have thought I was a genius struggling to sing one of my own songs. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do like to be in control of, of my own destiny, which is what I said earlier. And I found that doing my own albums, I mean, I think one of the reasons why the group has stayed together is, especially in recent years, is because we all have these other outlets. Is that why you did that? Well, yeah. it, it, is a, it isn't why we did it. I mean, the reason why Mike and Tony did their solo albums when they did them was because I got the divorce and I was going to go and move to Vancouver because my wife's parents uh, lived in Vancouver and at the time, we got two children, so at the time, the making that work was the priority. So I said, okay, well, I'll go and... She wanted to go to Vancouver with the kids and I said, okay, well, I'll go to Vancouver with the kids. Forget about a band, I'll go to Vancouver with the kids. So I'll do something in Vancouver. Uh, so I went to Vancouver for two months, and on the night before I left, we had a meeting, like with Tony and Mike and the manager, and uh, I said, I'm going to Vancouver. Uh, if you can come to Vancouver and rehearse and record and write, we still got a group. But if you can't do that, then I'm afraid there's no group. <laughs> so they said, well, hang on, hang on, you know, let's, you go to Vancouver, see if it uh, all works out. And um, we'll take it from there. Meanwhile, we'll do, start our solo albums. So anyway, I went for two months, nothing was any different, so I came back, and they were already in, immersed in their albums. So I started writing, and that's when I wrote my album. I can't be wait till morning. What motivates songs you write, and, and pieces of art that you put together? The things that, uh, I mean, I, I 
mean personal things, you know. I mean, I'm fed up over the years of hearing or singing about stories or fantasy and not things that people relate to, really. I mean, you know, harping back to my album, there were songs on that album that were, were you know, things that I wanted to say almost to the missus, you know. But um, a lot of people have said you know, how conversational it is, you know, how they can, un how they can understand. I mean, that, that's happened to them, you know, and how sad it would be if it happened to them, what happened to me, all that kind of stuff. I mean, so I think you, songs should, somewhere along the line, relate to people and, uh, and not just, you know, heroes from mythology. <laughs> I love the 60s. I mean, I think what we're doing now is relating to the 60s. I mean, in terms of the sound and the feel, because that's the music we all grew up with. And um, it's that rawness, you know, the production, the way they underproduced records, you know, because of necessity. They didn't have 24 track stuff, they just had four tracks. They had to make it all work. That's right. I didn't know until you told me a moment ago about mm. Sergeant Bever. Then. Yeah, I mean, it's, they had to commit themselves to something before they could do anything else. Because they did it on the four track. They were mixing down all the time, yeah. And, uh, I want to do that with, one, with, with an album of mine. I mean, I, I wanted to do it on this album, but I didn't get around to it. But what I'd like to do is to keep a mix going beside what we're doing all the time. So in the end, just to see how it differs, you know, you know, have two tracks going along all the time on, on the 24 track. Yeah. It constantly gets mixed down. Yeah. So you have the original rhythm track, you know. It's a whole big theory I've got about um, how things should be done. But... Uh, well, it, I exemplify that. I mean, uh, explain well, it a little more. You see, I mean, if, you, if you're in a group and you're laying down a backing track and the engineer's in there, there is a moment when you go in there and you listen to it and it sounds great. You've played it great, it sounds great. Right, that is the moment to me where everybody's like, <laughs> right, they should put it, you should mix it then, right? Because that is when the song is at its most potent. Anything that goes on top of it should really fit in with that, which is why the 60s, I think, had that, and the 50s, I mean, Spectre. I mean, Phil Spectre, you know, that, that, that whole thing is, is great as well. It's that anything that goes on it, you know, I want to do a lead guitar solo, I want, I want to put a tambourine on. Hang on, if it fits with the backing track, you can do it. Because you can't take the backing track apart, because it's, you know, it's already been onto two tracks. You understand what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. it's that, um, that... Magic? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely what it is. I mean, we did a track on Frieda's album. Oh, you mean uh, Annie Fried Lingstrom from ABBA? Yeah, and that song... I thought it would sound good if it was done at, like a Spectre sort of arrangement. So I went out and bought the box set of Phil Spectre albums and, uh, and put them all on the, on the record player in Sweden. And we checked out, I mean, it was great to listen to him anyway, but just checked out the kind of echo he used and how loud the percussion was and what the sound of the drums. And then we said, right, and we put our tape on and we worked at it. And we, I think we, got, we did pretty well considering it was done on digital equipment, you know, which has got a sound of its own anyway. I was going to ask you what kind of producer you considered yourself. I mean, well, well, I suppose I'm, you work differently than anybody else, or would you equate yourself with someone? No, I'm, I, I'm new at the job, really. I mean, the first album I ever produced was, was Face Value, and that was really, I, I mean, to me, asking anybody else to do it was, uh, it's just an interpreter, you know. If, if someone, it's like me saying to you, will you do that? I mean, I should do it myself, you know. If you're doing it, you're going to do it the way you do it. So i got to do it. And, uh... Really, it's like, if you agree with me, you're right, and if you don't agree with me, you don't understand. At the moment, most of the ends of the lines go down, which I think it'd be nice to avoid that. Is somewhere in the city? Is he somewhere in this town? I'd like to hear it a bit lighter, just once. Yes. Maybe it could be a good mix with the whole background. And yeah. Let me... I, mean, I don't like referring to the cassette, it's a totally different version, but I just listened to the way he sings it once. Okay. It's that kind of urgency. I talked to Phil be before we started to do the vocals and, uh, and said to him, if there's something that you feel you can take out from me that I don't notice myself, but you do, so please do it. So I think it's very good that he's a singer and a drummer as well, because he, he has another sense of rhythm 
that I don't have. So he can he can teach me a lot of things, and I appreciate that. There's a there's a there's a uh, there's a pattern with you, Phil. Uh, oh, well maybe I'll write the song. Oh, okay, I think I could do that. Oh, maybe I'll be the singer. Oh, maybe mm. I can do it. Is, uh, uh, what is this about your personality? I mean, uh, <laughs> domination. I, I just started being a producer and uh, came up with a giant album. I just started being a singer and came up with a giant album. I and mean, you, there's, you don't no. seem to have a lot of fear in your life. No, probably not. Actually, I'd not thought of that before. But I mean, I was I was a bit skeptical about doing Annie Freed's album because I mean, I had to get the musicians together, watch the budget, choose the songs, do the arrangements, sit there and tell her, yeah, you can do that better, or no, that's great never knowing whether she can do it better because I didn't, I mean, I didn't actually, I never met her really until about three or four weeks before the album started. So that was like the first proper production thing I've ever done. And uh, I mean, I enjoyed it a lot and I'll, I'll probably do more. I mean, I'm, I've been asked to do lots more and uh, I think that's very flattering, you know, and, and I'll probably do them because I think it's when someone asks you to do it, it's nice to do it. We were destined for each other my very first hello Came busting through that river that made that river flow. We will sail upon the ocean, till the shoreline meets the sky. Carry on the first trade wind that favors you and I. We have found the best between us, no misfortune in our face. Now in this time, we're on our way. Cause we're here, here we are. about when, we, when I come back here 10 years from now, will we be sitting here and you'll be doing album number 17? <laughs> Probably. Yeah? Is yeah. that what you want? I mean, really, what do you want to... Well, you know, when I was... You're really a young man. You're when I was 14, when I was 14, I, I, I wanted to... And I knew I was going to be a drummer, professionally. I went to a drum teacher, because I already knew how to play, but I wanted to learn to read, because I thought, OK, when this pop thing's over, I'm going to have to go into an orchestra pit and then be in a show band, you know, like a, like a big band or, or something I'm going to have to read. So um, I haven't really got that worry, I suppose, anymore, that, uh, that when the pop thing's over, yeah, I'm going to be hard up for a few bob. But I, would, I don't really think I can do anything else. I certainly don't want to run a music store. <laughs> so I think I'll always uh, be writing.